to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. <laughs> What's up, Jabraham Lincoln? <laughs> I'm calling you by a president's name to start the show. I like it. You know why? Because I'm super tall. Uh, Lanky. And, and, Skinny. And you'll probably be assassinated. Skinny. Tall. <laughs> no, neither of those. Powerful. Ne- right? Well, you're, pow- you're powerful. Which, yeah, which ones? Yeah. Pick three out of five. Great wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> Powerful legs. Sure. Yeah. Stays married to a crazy person. <laughs> because of the love. Okay, what's going on? Uh, what? we're gonna we're gonna start cause first of all, we've got one of our favorite shows of all time. Uh, uh, you on Netflix. Uh author Caroline Ketnis joins us today live from Los Angeles, California. <laughs> um we're super stoked to talk to her. That's, yeah. that's one of our favorites. We binged that show oh in my what, gosh. A, a, a day, I think, on you. Yeah, and cannot wait for the next one to come out, which they're filming right now, which she talks about. But she was really involved in oh, the yeah. show. So yeah. sometimes it's kind of like, oh, the author of the book. But she was like she was really casting, I mean, oh, involved yeah. in everything. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, she, she was uh, awesome to talk to. So we'll, we'll get to that interview after this. Um, so stay tuned for that if you're a huge U fan uh, like we are. And there will be a season two. Don't be um, on Netflix. alarmed in the interview. It's very, it's a kind of a who's on first situation because you're talking about you to, do to you know what I mean? the author of you. To the author of you. And so when you guys kind of talk back and forth about you and it was nice to talk about you and it gets... But just beware, guys, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that it's an interesting name for a, for a show. It's hard to um, it is. decipher in an interview. It is. And, and, and you know how I first heard about it was uh, on like the Today Show or something like that. It, it scrolled across where it was just like, and next up, you. And I'm I was like, like oh, oh is that a trendy new thing that I'm supposed to be? Am like, I? Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is, it, is it me? Is it me? Oh. Am I the? Oh. Am I the? Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know it was going to be like a self-help thing where it was just like, no, yep. you need to focus on Find you. you. Yeah. Where it's just like, all right, cool. Then it ended up being uh, Penn Badgedly. Badgedly? 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 Penn Badgedly. Penn Badgedly. Yep. Badgedly. Yep. Either yep. way, Gossip yep. Girl fan. And then I was like, we'll give this a shot. So we popped it on on a Friday Eve and then just got wet with it for yeah. did not uh shower feed shave feed our kids nope. wake up with them yeah. locked the door they were screaming outside just i mean cage babies. starving cage babies is what starving, we call starving dirty yeah. uh so it was good yeah yeah we had a, we had a really good time for <laughs> 3 yeah, days yeah gosh didn't we it was one of those we finished it in 3 days i think we watched like 3 a night yeah. for 3 days and then crushed it cuz everyone uh, knows but again the reason why i started the top with with a, a presidential theme jabes this is breaking news that just happens it's rare when there's breaking news that happens you heard it here folks spotify is buying podcasts right right soup surprise we're not on that list yet not yet but Same we will we have two of the biggest ones on the planet i'm fucking drinking bros is like number 30 on all of spotify Fill number up. three i mean number number one in three different states for christ's sakes um so I'm really shocked about that, but I'm glad that they gave these two young kids a break. Uh, Barack and Michelle Obama just signed a podcast deal okay. with Spotify that Fun. is exclusive. Um, that's going to be out of their... Hope they don't copy any of my pictures, Yeah, right? production company. So look, they've done a deal with Netflix already for movies and TV shows. Mm-hmm. Now they're getting into the podcast world. I do like to see underdogs kind of get, do you know what I mean? Get a, a chance. Yeah. Yeah. So that's nice. That's nice. And them. it is a theme. It's a, it's a trend now for literally everyone to start a, a podcast and be like, what? Like yeah, it's yeah, hard yeah, yeah. and it's just shoots to the top and they eventually fall. I mean, they all fall because yeah. they can't. 
You know, they they're not hungry the for it. Yeah, they don't have that thirst. They don't have that taste for blood on their loins. Yeah. And their livers and their bellies. Sure. But uh, yeah, uh, super stoked for these two. Um, glad glad Gosh, to see I that they, were, they were able to do something. Oh, I hope it works out for them. You know, their book deal was $33 million, right? Sure. Uh, I will say this. Her, her memoir, though, was the highest selling memoir of all time for Michelle Obama. So, I, I mean, I guess I respect the technique on, on that. She should be thanking Trump all the way to the bank. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it that, really it was, it a, was perfect a perfect time, time. Yeah, for, perfect her to sh- for her to shine. Yeah, because if you get somebody in office who's that polarizing, then boom. Because usually nobody would give a shit about the No, and I don't the remember. First lady. I don't remember reading a first lady's book. No, they were kind of. Yeah, exactly. They were kind of. They would talk about her fashion a little bit and yeah. sort of the work she was doing to end childhood obesity. But it was never like, Michelle, yeah. Michelle, I never, the way that it is now. Yeah, I never snuggled up with uh, Lady Bird Johnson's. Uh, autobiography, you know? No. Uh, LBJ's wife. Never, yeah. Never sat down on a bearskin rug, really stretched my, my whole shit out and read that. Sure. Um, I never really read care. Babs, Barbara Bush. Barbara Bush, yeah. I didn't read that masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Um, R.I.P., obviously. Yep. Um, super recent, still on my mind. Mm-hmm. A little uh, soon. I think well, it's a little soon to kind of bring that up. Some would say a little late. <laughs> some would also say a little late. Um I mean, I got something she could use, you know, if she was still alive. Straightrazors.com. Come on, James. You have to say it now. Right now? Yeah. Oh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you rock it! There it is. There it is. Jamie, I'm sorry, We're hitting bud. the sponsors early here. We're doing things unorthodox. <laughs> Why? Sorry. Because Barbara, uh, there was a, r- a rumor that Barbara Bush, when she was pregnant, sure, with the forty third president of the United States, right, used to use a straight razor on her bush. So again, and this st- was very meta. Right? Straight razors. Well, no, straight razors were huge back in the day, and then everybody got into the but the bush the of bullshit. a bush. Yeah, the bush a, of a bush. Bush of a bush. So. Uh, the B, the B, the B of B. The B of a B. <laughs> Just the classic B of a B. The B of B, the Bob. You if know? you will, yeah. The Bob. Yeah. The bush of the bush <laughs> is out there. Straightrazors.com is out there for all your shaving needs. If you're a man in this life or a pregnant lady. Don't do that, yep, lady. You're going to need it. Don't do it. Thank you. Go to straightrazors.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Uh, didn't want to skip over. Uh, ghost bed, obviously, because they're they're our chief sponsor, right? They're numero uno in our hearts, yes, and um, and minds, and in the set. Yeah. I, what I wanted to do was start with straight razors. Okay, take my take my time on ghost bed here because gotcha. I, I had to bring it up on the old computer of of what they were offering. I was incorrect. I was incorrect on the last show. Okay, um, they they said, hey man, this is a new month, and it is new month, new giveaway. I forgot that they gave away something new. Every single month with, with your order. Like, it's always something new. I was oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I sometimes thought, it's I was like, pillows ah, and yeah, sheets. Yeah, it was like free pillows, okay, yeah, free yeah. sheets. You always get something. You always get you always something get a from add them, on. which is awesome. So I wanted to bring up my email here. That's why we started Straight Razors first and, go, and then go into Ghost Bed. They're giving away the, the cooling protective cover for the mattress. Stop. Yes. That's free now. That thing's like 200 bucks. I don't know how they keep giving shit away like this for free. Uh, but good on them. Ghostbed.com. I hope they don't go under with all these deals. Drinking bros. I know, man. <laughs> and then because Rich hit me up and was just like, "Hey, man, uh, with this thing, like it's it's waterproof as well." I was like, "You trying to tell me something?" <laughs> he said that specifically to you. Yeah. He was, hey, Ross. Real quick, well, I just you look. We've talked about having a live birth on a ghost bed. Sure. Obviously, that cover is going to help. Yeah. Um, and cooling too oh yeah get a little nice little you're gonna need it yeah 15 degrees on your backside while you're giving birth get real hot yeah sweaty get hot sweaty um so you're gonna need that 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 protector which is rad sure 15 percent off anybody who's military or first responder and that's forever that's at the bottom of the page you you, you swipe down go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinker bros boom that's, that's an extra 200 bucks. I mean, with all of this, and then there's like for regular humans like myself, 
$7.99 off of bundle packages and whatnot. Like doing it right, doing it tight, doing it all night at ghostbed.com. Sleep so good it's scary. We need to we are gonna need to get two more. Yes. Um twin. I think a twin and a full. Because I'm gonna do bunky beds in Jax's room. Look at that. That'll be fun. Yeah. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today for all the deals. Again, regular human, dude. Uh, $100 off the classic, $200 off the uh, deluxe uh, and the flex mattress. Mm. The flex is for the bigger people Listen, out there. All inclusive. Yeah. That's um, what and we it's do here. drinking bros. Yeah. Not revolution. We're just ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is what it is. Because we're I'm hosting both shows where our YouTube channel is combining. And uh, shout out to Rich for uh, sending me that email about that, that, the cooling. That's, I mean, that's crazy. The deals are giving away. Crazy. This Swayze hair is crazy. Yeah, are you going to need a little trim Man, up this front? Man, this or... is really getting in all my, my shit. Now, what's the end game? Uh, Do we want hair all the way down to the nose? Or are we going to kind of clip? Maybe. It's in my nose right now, uh-huh. I feel like. I feel like it's in my nose right now. Yeah. Um, there's pieces everywhere. I don't, I don't know where this is going. Again. <laughs> It's gonna Your end. Eyes with, are watering. It's gonna end with uh, that wave sure. and me going down. I know that much. Sure, and then goodbye forever. That's right? it. That's it. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm starting to get teary a little bit with this summer of Swayze hair. Uh, it reminded la- me, uh, Andy uh, Andy Cohen on Bravo. Oh yeah, yeah was yeah. asking one of the gals, one of the housewives. Now, what's the end game with the lips? Because they were so huge. <laughs> and he just goes, "So what's our end game? Like, what do we think is?" I don't know what I'm going to do with this hair. Right. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, summer sways is somewhere in this all summer long, but uh, afterwards, I don't know. Might go high and tight. Now, I I do like that. Yeah. Or really long. You showed me something. I don't know about that. Okay. Just grow a mustache and go Almond Brothers for the rest of my life. Or again, yeah, I would go really short on the sides and like a longer one thing something on the front. I really don't have to deal with. That's why yeah, I like yeah, this yeah. right now. I don't have to do shit. I just right. wake up and go. Yeah, just Dawn Patrol and then. Yeah, Dawn Patrol. And then hit and the Studs. Studs for a quick pod. <laughs> brother. Except for they were ankle slappers today. Yeah. Brother. Watch out for those ankle slappers. Uh, but if you are out there serving, put a little Strike Force in that water of yours. That's our last sponsor. Ooh. Strike Force Energy. <laughs> Shablinkers.com. Four amazing flavors. Ridge, grape, lemon. What else did I forget? What? You said grape, a ridge, orange, orange I always lemon. I forget the orange, man. Yeah. Make like America the grape again. I like the fave. orange. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com for all your energy drink needs. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. They ship everywhere in the entire world, and you can kick the can. You can kick that can. You don't need it anymore. You just... Yeah. Throw it out the window. Well, you can stop being a loser is what it is. Yeah. And I like, I like to keep it simple. Yeah. You can just stop being a loser and you could use strike force energy. All day long. Rub it all over your body. That's it. Put it in your holes. Um, That's it. Strikeforceenergy.com. Revolution. 20% off. Put it in all your holes. So we've got Caroline <laughs> Katniss on the show. We author do. of you. Big fan, obviously. You Jabes, uh, that's going to throw off the <laughs> audience all night long tonight. Just so you guys know, be you, beware. Jabes, mm-hmm, me just per- had book club. I did with all of the ladies, and here's the crazy thing. I know it was you, and I don't. You didn't like because we don't we don't chat about book club. I think I think your book club is wine club. Yeah, yeah, it's all wine. It's just wine, and uh, you you guys bring the books. I think right. Oh no, yeah, no. Um, you just sort of pick a book suggest a book sure. and a date and uh, a place to eat and drink. So here's the wild thing, right? I'm yeah. watching the kids. You go. Yeah. And but anyways, I had to pick the book a month before. Correct. So I picked this book because I kind of wanted to, what I'm trying to do with the book club is turn it into a Netflix or book club, whatever you may have time for, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In your life. So I yeah. go, okay, perfect. You is an awesome series, but it also is an amazing book. So for those nerds, beat it, that want to actually read the book, yeah. blammo. Blams. For people that don't have time, they have little babies, whatever, yeah. they can watch the series. So this is my first rollout of this amazing, brilliant idea. So. Picked it a month before, 
With all of that being said, Jabes. No, stop it. I can tell stories too, okay? You can. You're not the only one that can tell a long-winded, long, 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 long story. So can I. So <laughs> we went to the book club. I've told them the book. We talked about it a little bit. I get a bling text on my phone. As I'm at book club, what does it say? Hey, we've got Caroline on the show. 3 p.m. Wednesday. Yes. So I was able to be like, and it made me look kind of like you. You know what I mean? Just being like, hey, guys. Hey, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. got a text about, you know, interviewing the author next week. And they're like, shut up, loser. But Boom. they were all super. I mean, I was a champion. I make champion dreams of, happen. Yeah. And that's what I do. I'm a dream maker. And I, that wasn't actually the point of the story. But I like that you went there. It wasn't, but it, it, yeah. it really needs to come back to me on this one. Oh, okay. Um, that I make dreams happen. Mm -hmm. No, but uh, the reason I'm bringing it back to me is you didn't, I didn't know which book you were going for. And then when I texted oh. you at the dinner. You didn't? I, no. I guess we don't talk. Well, we don't ever. talk about book club. I don't, because I don't, I don't really Forever. care about you and your dumb friends. You sure. know what I'm saying? So I'm like, <laughs> sure. Cool. Whatever sure. you dummies want to do, I don't really right. care. Right, little dumb dums. Yeah. Okay. You guys all come back kind of tipsy or whatever. I don't sure. Even, I don't even. We ask. maybe smoked a cig. Yeah. A I, cig or two, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and Marlboro Lights. And that's where, by the way, you need reverse rehab. Is for moms that have given birth, no drinking for nine months, mm -hmm. right? And then mm -hmm. they try and hop back in. Yeah. The way they used to. No. You need a you need a quick month of reverse rehab. Uh huh. To get yourself back to a place where you can, like, yeah. have a couple of glasses and not go fucking nuts. Be a little lady again. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so when you were like, I was like, hey, what book is it? And you were like, it's you. And I was like, oh, shit. I, dude, I just texted the author. She's coming on Wednesday. Yeah. And I was like, I, I didn't know that was your book. Crazy. And that was your whole thing. And I was like, man, well, this is going to be cool. And then I, I screenshotted the thing and sent it to you, like... Of what people don't believe saying. you, yeah, because yeah. I was like, no, no. what are the chances that you're at a book club for that book? I had read it years ago, um, right. and I want to I give a special shout out to Ken Murray, um, who, uh, for, not only a friend of mine, but it was a Boston film critic, and he's the one who put us together, actually, okay. on this interview, maybe, I don't know, four or five years ago, and it was, uh, I think the first article was about uh, like the most underrated books of the year, okay. and it was... One, it was a night she cries while he rides the seed mine and then uh, you by, right. her, by her and I was like oh alright awesome so that's when I read it mm -hmm. and I was like dude this is rad um, but you know you read it and you don't know what's going to happen she right. talks about it later in the interview yeah 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 um, and that's how we kind of got connected and then when you and I were watching the show and then went to the credits and that popped up I was like oh shit I know her Like, and it was we're, ran you were just like why do I know that name and I was like I don't know. I'm yeah. I don't know. Why do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I <laughs> connected all the dots, and then uh, we did another thing together where we picked out like underrated movies or something. Um, but uh, yeah, she was she was rad. She's on the show, and that was pretty cool. That's a pretty cool flex, Jabe's at uh, book it club. It really was. It really was. No. Yeah. yeah, and I basically just said that I got the interview. Do you know what I mean? Like I didn't. Like, I didn't tell him that you got it. Oh, of course not. Yeah, <laughs> you know what course. I mean? Because uh, while the cat's away. Sure, sure. The mice will, will lie. Will lie. Yep. Will and lie I to their friends. I think that's the, yep. Yep. That's the old. S old saying. The old wives. <laughs> wives. Of, dong. Of New Jersey tale. <laughs> the right old there. wives tit. Yep. Is that also? <laughs> what is it now? Are you telling an old wives tit again? <laughs> uh, huh? Tale as old as tits. Tits. There's <laughs> nothing I love more in this life than a good old wife's tit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> old too. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you because this was my this was my one of my faves at the time. Author wise, let's say you were able to reach out to someone you know like me, um, and you're super powerful and young, <laughs> and uh, and are able young just like to, you, young just Ross. to just to yeah. hit people up um, at at, at a, on a whim and say, hey, come and do the show. Who's your jam author wise? Um, author of Brain on Fire. I'm gonna have to. Look oh, that's it right. Up. You love that book. She went through it. It's like a bi yeah, biography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, Brain on Fire. And there was. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't they make a movie out of that? They or made a, a, a show. Suzanne. Uh, Susanna Callahan. That's right. That's right. She was. I, we saw. They her. made a show, and I didn't like it. Was it Charlize Theron, or did she just produce it? I think she just produced it. She optioned the, she bought the rights. So right after I bought it, or right after I read it, you were like, Charlize Theron, I think, just bought 
bought the rights to that. Whether she sold it to the show or she was a part of it, I'm not sure. Yeah. But it was that little, that little ding dong, whatever that played. Oh, uh, was it Chloe yes. Grace Moretz? That's yep. it. Yeah, you love her. Not you at love all. her. So well, that's I the, was. That's the, I, I think she's. I think she's a good actress. I know you hate her, but um. But, Anyways, but that's that's the thing about books, and you know, we talked about this: is you don't really get to control who it is. You and I talked about this a few weeks ago. Like, if I didn't get to play, if I don't get to play St. James Street mm-hmm. James in my own shit for HBO, I'm gonna go bug fuck. I'm gonna lose everything inside my body. Sure. Because there's no reason anyone should be playing St. James Street oh, James yeah, other for than sure. me. Um, and I like. That's the hard thing about this in Hollywood is, you know, you, you have to let go of these projects of like, all right, great. And everybody's got different views on it. So unless you direct it, write it, produce it, star in it and all that stuff uh, and try to control it, then you, you have zero control. Right. Um, I've written, you know, shit, countless uh, rewrites for studio movies and things like that. And, you know, I'm not going to say what the last one was. We, you know, usually you sign NDAs for all this stuff, mm. but like, uh, the cast of the last one was not supposed to be that. Oh, the one before the last one. Got it. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. And it was just like, wait, what? Yeah. It was originally four dudes and then it mm-hmm. ended up being two chicks and two dudes. And you were just like, huh? It's kind of like that new. Uh... I wasn't stoked about it. No. And then yeah. I, I went and saw it in the theaters to kind of give it a, a shot because the reviews were good. And it was a way different movie than I had fucking rewrote. And yeah. there's nothing you can do. And, yeah. you know, uh, a couple of my buddies wrote the original and um, I asked them the same thing. I was like, how surreal was it? Because they ended up going to set for that one. I, I didn't. Mm-hmm. And they were like, I was, I was like, how surreal is it that this was nowhere near what you wrote and now you're watching it being made? Yeah. And they were like, bro, sitting behind the camera and watching this one fucking dude read lines that, you know, we had written, had not chosen. And he just beefed him, like just beefed all the lines. He was just like, I don't know. People were laughing on set, man, but it was just kind of miserable for me. And I was like, Ugh. Ugh. so with, with her, you know, with Caroline and this you book, like all of the characters to me in that show fit, mm-hmm. um, all of the actors fit their roles. And, uh, I like, I loved all of them and Stamos was in it. Oh mm, yeah. Come on. She reveals a little something about him and, uh, yeah. Uh, the other one I like is Nick Hornby. You know him, High Fidelity? Yes. I think that worked out. And he definitely relinquished control to John Cusack in that. But I think it worked out. Yeah, 100 I loved everybody in it. I thought the I, casting, I, I too, thought yeah. the way that they did it. And he was really happy with it. But that's not usually the case. Even no. when you talk to, uh, and even with her loving how you turned out, it's like it doesn't. They're not usually super stoked. No, no, no. So, and, and it's, you know, usually it's like a David Duchovny stitch in Californication where you're just like, all right, sweet. Did it, that guy not like it? No, no. Oh, but oh. Uh, remember in Californication, uh, Rob, he had to do that thing with, and Rob Lowe ended up playing it. It was a great. Oh, yes. Rob Lowe crushed That's it. That's perfect. Uh, way to explain it hey we're gonna do this ombre yeah yeah, yeah. they like, have oh, to like God. hang out yeah and he just like I need, takes I, them I on need this. to take another man in my oh, mouth man and you're God. just like oh god that this is the so dude oh good and that's kind of what it is i mean man i've written for so many things that like very rarely unless it's my own is it the people that i wanted yeah. even in fuck some instances like some of my first couple movies that i produced like i, I remember the first one the, the the financers had a lot of say because it was my first one. Yeah. And there was people in that that I was get, like, I would have cast other people, but you know. You got to give do. them one. It's like McConaughey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give them one. You do. And you take the other. But it's weird to see it come to life after, you know, especially when it's your first thing and it, yeah. and it comes to life and then you're like, and you'll oh, kind of do right. whatever to have it come to exactly. life. So it's interesting that she was able to have such control over it that's kind of yeah and i and i heard with high fidelity i think they're making that into a tv show um no, but don't, they're, don't do I, it. they're bringing back the screenwriter so maybe i don't know the only problem with that is let's face it cusack's Q-Sack. not coming back to do it no jack black's not coming back no. to do it so and the, it, and and again like the book was really good that script for the movie probably wasn't amazing but it was jack black Cusack, yep. Tim Robbins, yeah. other little dum dum, 
you know? Yeah. It, all the way around, they, they knocked that one out of the park. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in the future with some of these things. Like, you know, we're, I'm, I'm going through it now with, with uh, Matt's book where, you know, we've talked to producers and all that stuff about the rights because if it blows up, you know, somebody's going to buy the movie rights and who is it going to be? Yeah. Uh, one of the pitches was like Chris Pratt playing Matt. And I was like, ah. All right. Yeah, I, I, I can guess, see that. right? Yeah. Um, but it's hard. But only know? if he like lets himself go a little bit. It, it lets who go? Chris. Yeah. Just joking. He's not a prayer. He's got to. He's, he's got to tighten up it up to be Matt. Well, Best. he's got to tighten it up a little bit. Yeah. You know gotta, what I mean? It can't be all that water weight. Yeah. The he, water muscles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's got to tighten that up. Chris Pratt needs to tighten it up. I told him, I was like, dude, it'll probably be like Sean William Scott. Just be prepared for that. Right. And that's what it's going to be. Listen. Not that he's not a lovely person, but sure. you know. Sure. Uh, it, it, it's weird like when it's your own life and then you're just letting it go. And Do I you this, know who you would want to play? Have you, I'm sure you've talked about this a million for, times. For what? Whatever, if this were to happen, if someone was to make a movie. Of, of my life? Yeah. Who would play you? Uh, Forrest Whitaker. Yep. I'd like uh, Forrest Whitaker to play me. Mm-hmm. Um, strong backup would be uh, obviously the uh, probably the black kid in Stranger Things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. um, and I see that. <laughs> Tall for his age, right? Depending on who you put him with. Yeah, yep. that could work. Yep. Um, if he's with Dink. Yeah. And then, oh, so Peter Dinklage is third. Um, Gosh, wouldn't that be great? So you want your... Octavia Spencer <laughs> you is want fourth for me. Your, but no, what if it was like all like midget? And then if it was, then Dink would totally be you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? If everyone else was also a small person, little person, however. What did you... Have you seen the clips for the new uh, Robert De Niro and uh, Al Pacino movie? Uh, Kind of. It's called The Irishman. Sure. Um, and it's oh, yes. Martin Scorsese yeah. directed it. It's like a hundred twenty five million dollar budget. Janky trailer for it actually. Well, it, it, they didn't put anything in it. Yeah. It was just kind of like a cartoony thing of like, here, here's the title of the movie. It was like It was like a final cut bullet. Yeah, too. it was like it was get like, get fucked with yeah. that. Like you know. But it's it's Netflix, right? So they're releasing it and I think it's at the end of this year and they wanted to compete for Oscars or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there was a a photo leaked from on set of Robert De Niro walking around. And I I guess he's supposed to be a lot taller than Al Pacino in this. And they had him in these wedges that were like. Oh, my gosh. Double the size of this. And he's just walking around. It looked like it looked like Frankenstein boots. And it was just or like, Saturday Night Fever or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm nice. look. I don't know who the Irishman is in real life. Like, I, you know, I'll have to look, study up on it. Sure. But uh, I'm sure if he's alive or dead, you know, you mm-hmm. look at that and you're like, man, if he's got to wear eight inch risers to play me, like, we're, we're, right. what are we doing here? What are we doing here? My- Same with Marcus Luttrell. And we asked him for oh, yeah. Lone Survivor. <laughs> you know, I I sat down on the show with him and asked him, and I said, hey, man, what? Uh, what was the sitch with, with Wahlberg? I mean, he's about half your size. Right. Used a Boston accent, nowhere near a Texas accent and all that stuff. And uh, he said, look, you know, we met up together. Uh, he, Marcus is like the nicest dude on the planet. So he was grateful the movie was getting made and all that stuff. Right. And, and obviously Mark Wahlberg's in it, so fine. Um, but uh, he said, look, use the use your accent. Don't try to be too much of me. And, you right. Know, Whatever's going to be most comfortable, comfortable for you. Comfortable, yeah. Now, for me, if Margot Robbie, like, Drops a few pounds, <laughs> got some work done if, to make her just like a little bit prettier. Yeah. I think she could definitely play me. Play you, yeah. I mean, yours is She'd easy. She'd be honored to do so. I pro- probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, she played Tanya Harding, so she could play you. So what, do you, uh, what does that play you. mean? She can shapeshift. She's a shapeshifter. She can do a lot so of things saying if she with her body, heart, and mind. If she could play Tanya Harding, then she could play me? She can play anything. And I'm not anything. actually sure what that she means. She can play anything, okay? Okay. She's going to be Barbie next. So let's, let's go easy on, on uh, Margs, all right? Let's go easy on Margs. M- on the Margs? On the Margs. Yours is Christina Applegate. That's it. And that's, that's pretty much now? checkmate. Yeah. Now? I don't know. I, I I saw her in that uh, that new Netflix show. We gotta we gotta Gosh, peep it. They, All they the listeners have been HD. hitting us up. They yeah. put it in HD. I mean, that is a clear pick on that skin and face. <laughs> so, and I'm sorry for her on that. 
Well, Netflix always has the worst thumbnails of every show on the planet. Yeah, because I didn't, I didn't watch any of it. Uh, no, I, so I haven't seen that show, but all of our listeners keep hitting us up. Yeah. Dead Like Me? Dead to Me. Dead to Me. Mm-hmm. Um, every, all of our listeners are like, yo, this show is fucking baller. So we got to check it out. We got to peep it. See Apple Gates. What are you laughing at? Nothing. My remarkable ability to remember everything. No, I just, I didn't watch any of it, so. No, I haven't either. I was waiting for you. Oh, you watched all of it. I did not watch all oh, of it. Oh, no. I didn't watch all of it. You watched all of it without I just, me. No, I just saw a little bit just to kind of make sure. How many have you sure. watched? How many are there? You dirtbag. I did. Did you gun through I the whole wouldn't. season? I, no. God. No one, that would be a horrible thing That'd to be do. A, a long and, time and I would, to God, spend. No, and I would, I would never. So, no, I just watched one. I just kind of peeped it out, made sure that it was something that you might be able to get into. What's the verdict, yes or no? I think, yes, it's a little campy. We'll see where it goes. I don't we'll mind, see where it goes. I, I don't mind campy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so was you. Like, in the beginning, I was kind of like, I don't know, dude. And then at, literally at, at the end of the first episode, I was hooked in. in it. So it's sort of like that where you're like, what is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I going to like this? And you get invested pretty quickly in, in the characters. Okay. So maybe, but again, maybe it is. that is a harsh, light, very clear pick okay. on uh, Christina Applegate. And so when I'm getting the messages of how much I look like her, am I offended? Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> I would hope they would say a younger, but they haven't been. Yeah. Um, like a younger, a prettier, but they don't. They just say straight up, I look exactly like her. So. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Ken Jeong, by the way, is my uh, number five. The other one. Okay. Uh, from my bio, my biopic. Um, biopic. Uh, biopic. So, yeah, those, those, are, those are the top five people I want to play me. If it's anybody other than those five, I'll say no, obviously. You know, it'd be um, fun kind of like meta show would be like Margot since she's such a shapeshifter, maybe playing both of us. Right. And kind ah, of like you play twins. Be great. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be real fun. She could play both of us in a love scene too. Um, Gosh. Yeah. And I think Margot on Margot. Margs yeah. on Margs. <sighs> what? Your Come fantasy. On. Your fantasy. I'm just true. saying it's Margs on Margs. Right. You know? All right. Well, we should probably get into the, the interview. We will. Um, Margot Robbie, if you're out there and want to come on the show, talk about playing us, um, maybe show us some stuff. You're welcome. This is a brand new studio. Are the you asking for nudes? ceilings are high. Are you asking for nudes from Margot? Um, no, no, no. I, we've seen, oh, we've seen a nude in Wolf of Wall Street. Show us some stuff. But what I'm saying is... This is a tall table, right? It's it goes to the ceiling. Sure, just pop on by, and uh, you know we'll do a, a light photo shoot to see if we like your abilities and your ways that you do things. It's like magically when I'm not here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, on the date, <laughs> she of couldn't make it. Yeah, June nineteenth um, through at August five p.m. forty third. Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> You start getting so nervous, you just start making up things. Yeah. On August 43rd uh, in the year 1849. Can you be here and take a picture with me and all of my friends and family? Great. You're we'll losing it. We'll see you then, Margs. You're losing it. Let's uh, go. You're, I'm gaining it. Uh, we're also gaining a huge interview. Uh, this is the author of You, Caroline Kepnes. <laughs> Welcome, Caroline Hi, Kepnes. Rock. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Uh, you're on fire these days. Yes, it's it's been a very exciting time. Continues to be. <laughs> yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, about maybe I would say four or five years ago, a mutual friend of ours, Ken Murray, uh, put us on a on a list together of uh, two unknown authors who they were their favorites, and one of them was you. And I'd read your book. Oh, yes. I love Ken. <laughs> yeah. One of the best in the biz. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite critics. And uh, he was honest. And not only that, but I, I loved your book. I had read you and it was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Were you, Thank were, you, you. were you expecting any of this at all? 
No, I mean, it's a thrill. Like, you write a book, you're alone with it for so long, you don't know if anyone will ever get it or if you're crazy. And especially with this book, like, one day I would be talking about Joe like he was funny and, you know, sexy, and the next day I'd be talking about murder, and my friends are like, are you writing two different books? And I'm like, no, like, that's the point. It's the same guy. Yeah. So... It's yeah, it's always like a leap of faith. So it's just it's it's such a good feeling when other people read something and it means something to them and they get all revved up about it because you just can't you know, it's like that's what's completely out of your control. And it's such a gift. Yeah. And and as a writer, you know, you're sitting alone in a in a room or a hotel or your bedroom or or whatever, wherever it is you're writing and you're hoping Mm -hmm. that it reaches the masses like this, but rarely does it ever. Um, what yep. was your hopes and expectations as you were writing this book? What was like genuinely? I'm, I mean, I felt like I, I had that great experience of feeling like I was on fire, like I couldn't stop writing it. So to me, no matter what's going on in my career, it's like that's the feeling. It's like the high that you chase at a blackjack table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, if, yeah, I'm like the more I'm into it, the more I can dream of a world where other people are into it. But then you just never know. You never know. And there are so many books over the years, my whole life that I love that no one's ever heard of. And it's like, you just don't know. Nobody knows. You know, Yeah. It's, it's... I remember when I first moved here, that was someone I knew kept saying that over and over again, that it was the bottom line in the business. Nobody knows. And I think about that all the time. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's such a weird industry that you, you really don't know. And I've had friends who have written things that they thought were shitty and have blown up and gone on to, you know, worldwide success. And then I've got friends who have written unbelievable, like masterpieces and they've gotten nowhere. They're, they're poor as shit. Yep. It's, uh, it's, it's bizarre. Mm-hmm. So how, how did you start? I was reading online that you got started as a television writer. Yeah, well, I was actually, I was started as a journalist in New York. I was at Tiger Beat magazine. Really? Old school and, Tiger yeah. Beat back in the Kirk uh-huh. Cameron days. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm, yeah. <laughs> no, I just missed him. I was in the heyday of NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys. Oh, all right. Cool. That, look, that works because it was Kurt Cameron and then it moved into NSYNC and Backstreet and all those guys. So you were hitting like the right. Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears era. Yeah, he was a baby when I was there. Like it was all he was like one of the guys in NSYNC and then he was with Britney and it was like he was emerging as as Justin, you know, (laughs) but he wasn't like the Justin that we have now. (laughs) No, no. He was wearing uh, denim on denim back then. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Which look, I good memory. Yeah. Look, that's that we call that the Tennessee tuxedo in Georgia. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, super proud of that. So, so how do you go from that to, you know, writing in TV and books? Because that's a that's well, a huge leap. Oh, yeah. Well, in college, I took a lot of fiction writing workshops and I was always writing short stories. So for me, it was always like I wanted to do creative writing and I that's and I love writing prose. And that was my dream. And I and I wanted to do any form of creative writing. And after Tiger Beat, I went to Entertainment Weekly and they sent me out to California for press tour. And I met showrunners that I'd never met before and talked to a lot of TV writers. And I was like, oh, God, like this this sounds, you know, like a really incredible thing to do. So I decided to move out here and try and go for it. And then my, I got a job. I wrote a couple episodes of Seventh Heaven. I don't yeah. know if you remember that show. Oh, <laughs> b- big fan. Are you kidding me? That was Beale Sterner Prime too, Jessica Beale. You've seen those smiling faces, those smiling down on you. Oh, uh, every, every time. That's, look, they took it off the air because uh, the father ended up touching a bunch of kids. But uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seventh Heaven was the jam back in the day. Yes. So that was that was a really great experience. And then. From there, I was a, a staff writer on Secret Light of the American Teenager, was, which was the same showrunner. And all the time, like, it's the through line of my life. I just am always writing short stories. And eventually, like, the I, the, I wasn't on the show anymore. I had time off. I had this, like, very hellish time in my life of the in-between where you're like, what am I doing? And journalism was changing so much. And I was working a little freelance, but I didn't have enough work. And it was like, okay, I'm, and I had lost my father and I'd had, you know, so much debt. It was just like, my life was just a nightmare in every way, you know? Yeah. And if anything, this book, like, it was like my escape hatch. And it was like, okay, I can either sit here and worry and panic and check my bank statement, which I know what's in there, which is not enough, <laughs> or I can like, try and like write my way out of like at least keep my sanity and keep myself happy like there's that Stephen quote Stephen King quote where he talks about writing to get happy and it was very much that like this book like 
it sounds silly, but I felt like, oh, Joe like saved my life because I was in such a dark place and writing it and creating it was just the, the greatest outlet exactly that I needed. So it was like this super bonus that I sold it and that, you know, that things went well. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny. Cause you know, I've done a bunch of movies, uh, obviously in LA and all that stuff. And, and, and I'm with you in that, that exact sentiment of, I felt no matter what was going on in my career, at least writing personally saved me where that was something that I could control every day. It wasn't you yes. know, based on somebody else's outcome or whether or not they like this or like that. And in particular books, because I, I'd written and sold, you know, a bunch of screenplays books for me. Yep. I didn't have to write for a budget. I didn't have to write for Tom Cruise or, you know, some mm -hmm. superstar. I could just sit down and write without a budget or uh, actors in mind or whatever. And then afterwards, whatever happened with the book happened with the book. We all yep. you know, hope to have the same dream as, as you, uh, pun intended. But, uh, you know, when, mm -hmm. when that actually happened to you, what were, what were your, your, your first thoughts? Just, I mean, it, it was a, a process of like, oh, Greg Berlanti and Sarah Gamble, you know, they want it. And, you know, especially, you know how the business is of like most things, nothing ever happens or like you see the option. Then years later, you're like, wait, whatever happened to that? Yeah. So or, I had or, my or, or worse, that. you shoot the pilot and then it doesn't get picked up. Yeah. I mean, it's at, like at every stage. And I feel like I'm a very patient but impatient person. So I would have these two minds of like, I want it now. And then my other brain was like it doesn't happen fast if it happens at all and like anything takes time so it was just like on the hamster wheel for a while I mean I'd get this you know I remember getting the pilot script and being so excited after reading it and like they just got it you know and it was and I'd have the conversations with them where I felt optimistic because they were so hell-bent on like preserving the feeling of the novel and then an hour later I'm like okay but when does it get sh you know when do we shoot it when does it get made you know, it's like you're always <laughs> yeah. waiting for something else it's like no matter what happens so that's where again it just keeps coming back to the writing the writing if you love the writing and keep going then the time flies by but if you're like focusing on okay like when you know when are they gonna or okay they're gonna shoot the pilot well when are we gonna see all the episodes when are they gonna shoot everything then time goes really slowly so that's my that's my like everyday thing if i'm like it's i can sit here and obsess over like when is the second season gonna air or right. i can work on the third book you know like <laughs> yeah it's it's a never-ending hamster wheel of like how can i get a third house how can i get a fourth when when they actually what? cast it and got it going were you happy with it were you happy with the casting and everything was that what you would envision? yeah i was thrilled i mean it's one of those like there, Greg and Sarah and David Rappaport, who is like the greatest guy, the, who, the head of the casting, everyone, we were just like, everyone cared so much. And I think that especially like, you know, since I've lived here a while, I know that that's not always the case, you know? So it's really nice to have everyone as passionate as you are because it's their baby too. You know, it's like the show is, it's their baby. And it was a really nice meeting of the minds. Like when with Penn, it was like, oh my God, yes. Like this is it. This is absolutely, absolutely it. And with Elizabeth, like it was, everything just kept feeling like off the charts good, you know? Yeah, and it, I feel it, really grateful for that because again, like, yeah, not always the case. <laughs> no, definitely not always the case. The uh, I thought uh, the girl looked a lot like you. Was that intentional or not? I don't, I mean, I know she and I, I, we've laughed about that because I mean, I, she's much taller than me, but like, I feel like we, we are a lot of like, and we have a similar way about us and she's just lovely. And I don't think that that was intentional. I mean, she's just like a terrific actress. It's just a really funny coincidence, you know? And <laughs> <laughs> so it just happened to work out like that. I didn't know if that was like, Hey man, we should get somebody that looks like the author. Like that would be great. <laughs> especially where elizabeth at the time when she was reading it was in new york so she was like and so she was like oh i'm reading this book that's about like what my life is right now and i'm like oh my god and i wrote this book about my early 20s in new york you know like reflecting on that so it was yeah on so many levels it was just so cool <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing and then and then you shoot it and it's it's at lifetime but for me personally i didn't see it on lifetime i i didn't see it until it got to netflix um <laughs> Was that the feeling yeah. for, for you and a lot of other people? Yeah, I mean, it was. It's crazy that way because there were billboards everywhere, and you know, and everyone at Lifetime was so gung ho and so like again, like so passionate, revved up about it, and the billboards, and we did so much press, and and then it was like, okay, the numbers aren't, you know, like uh, you want it to be like bigger, 
but it was like, it's still beautiful. I, we all felt like, oh, this has that potential to be like that viral thing. I think it's just with Netflix too. It's the way that we live now. I mean, I know myself, like I can sit down and watch something. I love knowing that I can watch as much of it as I want. Mm -hmm. And if I want to like get addicted, then I can feed that addiction. So I understand where like this platform, it's like, it's, it's how so many people like to consume things. Yeah, and, uh, I, I yeah. We, we had uh, Steve Howie from Shameless on the show uh, a couple days oh, ago. Oh, I love him. Yeah, I love Shameless. The, yeah. the best. And and if you're looking for somebody for that show, he's a fantastic person in real life. Oh, um, good. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been friends for a, a bunch of years. But he, he said sort of the same thing of, you know, right around season four or five, when it went to Netflix, not so much on Showtime, but when net Netflix, it just skyrocketed. And the ratings have continuously gone up. Uh, and it, even in season eight was an all time high for them, which is mm -hmm. not typical at all. But no. for, for whatever reason, um, you know, Netflix is king right now and everybody seems to be binge watching on Netflix and they just got picked up for two more seasons. How many more seasons of this did your show get picked up for? Was it just the second season or they pick up the third book as well? Yeah, right now, just a second. Of course, I hope for more and more and more. And yeah, what you just said about like the, the Netflix boost, I feel like no matter what happens, I mean, I grew up in the 80s and I loved watching my shows knowing that like everyone else was watching them at the same time. And it's like TV to me has always been like theater. Like you want that experience if the lights are off and we're all in this together. And that's what Netflix allows when they you know, they put 10 episodes on and you have that, that Twitter festival. It's like what, it's the way that we all come together now, you know? And it's so different from like, Oh, once a week, it's that thing of like, this is out right now and we're all going to watch it and get obsessed together. So <laughs> when, when did you figure it out that it, it had become massive on Netflix? Because it, you know, I'm sure you get an air date from, you know, the, the studio or your agent or whatever says, Hey, this is going to Netflix. Are you checking Twitter or is Twitter finding you saying, Hey, I love you. I, I didn't like know about your show. Yeah, suddenly I it was I remember that moment of I feel like it was a few days after and it was like, oh, oh, wait, this is that thing. This is that thing that everyone's talking about. And it was surreal and magical. And I was like shaking of like seeing memes and seeing, you know, especially going back to like when you make up these characters and sit alone with them for so long and like, oh, my God, someone else is talking about Peach. Like and I'd have I have great readers, but it was just like the scale suddenly, you know, it was that was amazing. That was a yeah, like. I shake just thinking about it because that was it's another thing because you don't know what's going to happen. Like they can put them all on and then, eh, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, th thanks yeah. for playing. And, you know, we're going to yank yep. the license and that's it. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, for, for me, the, the, the most interesting part for me was I finished it with my wife and both of us are watching it. And then your name popped up immediately at the end. And I was like, man, I know this. I know her. I know this name. And then I immediately went to Twitter and was like, oh, of course. We, we were mentioning this article together when we did this other interview with Ken uh, together. Uh -huh. And I was like, that's the same person. I was like, no way. Uh, four yeah. years later, you know, boom, you, you have this massive success. And uh, it was really, really cool to see. And uh, I'm thrilled that it got picked up for a season two. I saw Chris D'Elia's in the, in the, the, the new season. Yes, he's playing Henderson, the, you know, the comedian who's kind of horrible and wonderful. I mean, wonderfully horrible. Yeah. And are they still <laughs> calling like, it you or are they calling it Hidden Bodies, which is the name of the second um, book? They're calling it you. I think it's just easier that way. You know, it'll, it's yeah. like it's based on Hidden Bodies. And it's like with anything like it's a, like there's a lot of the book in there and it's a little different. It's, you know, so, yeah. And I think that they would never change the name of it when it's doing so well. And I, I agree with that, you know. Yeah, I do too. I, especially for viewers and everything. Look, uh, it's like Hollywood tells you all the time. Americans are dumb. Just keep it super simple and then make <laughs> yes. sure. And it's like, oh, great. Is, is you season two on? Yeah. Uh, and everybody's going to come out for that. How were, yeah. you, were you on set for, for all of the season? This season I haven't. I have been, I have been so hunkered down writing that I haven't been yet, but I'm going this month. Like, I'm like, there's no way I'm not going to make it over there. So I am going this <laughs> month and I love hearing for like they're shooting in LA. So it's been like around and it's, it's just so exciting to wake up and be like, Oh my God, somewhere in the city right now, they're making you. I mean, yeah, so cool. But I'm like, I'm trying, I want to finish this book and I get very obsessed with whatever I'm doing. So I've been very like, just, you know, yeah, on the sofa with the computer. <laughs> yeah, I, I can so imagine. Glamorous. Yeah, and, and and you and I were going back and forth on a on a chitter uh, on a Twitter exchange um, mm -hmm. about the pressure of signing on because you sign on for what two more books? Two more, yes. Yeah, and, and the pressure of it of racing against your own TV show. 
Because to me, this is what happened with Game of Thrones, where you know it was based on books and it was awesome, and then the TV show got ahead of the books. Are you worried that right. that'll happen to you? No, because the timing, is, I feel like the timing is really great where they're still shooting season two. I mean, I hope like, you know, knock on wood, there has to be season three. There just has to be. So I feel like the timing seems pretty good. And season two and book two are a little different. And I like having these parallel world, worlds because books are so books and TV are so different. Yeah. And to me, when I like something like I love as much of it as I can get, it's like that space balls, the movie space balls, the placement, you know, like I like <laughs> right, right. having these two different shows. I also think it's really interesting what a character can be like in a book and what the, you know, as opposed to like how they can be on screen. So to me, it's exciting to see them like, you know, all both like moving forward so because i have two more books of course i want two more seasons yeah, <laughs> at right? least two more right <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah because to, to me like you know i look at the 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 guy from game of thrones J.R.R. tolkien or what you know whatever his name is i'm not a big game of thrones guy i just know that mm -hmm. you know the fans obviously were pissed that his you know he hasn't put out a book in a while and, yeah. you know, it's because to me, whenever things are a success in Hollywood, like like you or something, right, those start to race yep. out seasons real quick. Um, oh, yeah. So, I, you know, as a writer, a lot of people go through creative uh, processes. Uh, what, what's yours like? Because that's that's one of the biggest questions we get into the show is like a book like you. How fast did that take you to write? That the first book, I feel like I'm always a little if it was like. March, April to December. So that's about nine yeah, months. About, about nine months, yeah. Yeah, and this the second one was it just was longer because then once the book is out, like I had promotional stuff, I mm -hmm. had other stuff going on. So it's like it takes a little more time. This one, I'm it feels like another knock on wood nine monther, but that's a very dangerous thing to say when you're like 200 pages into it, you know. <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah. <laughs> once you start to get in that mindset of like, oh, man, I've, I've written it in nine. No big deal. I can kind of take my time and write it in another nine. You know, yeah. se season two could come out and explode. And you're like, oh, shit, I, they, they want three more, you know? Right. It's that. Yeah. And it's the like, you know what? It, I mean, when you have a deadline, it's that suddenly every like every hour you, you have some violent mindset one minute where you're like, it's great. I'm ahead. I can relax. And five minutes later, for whatever reason, you're like, chapter 13 is a piece of shit. And I have to fix it right now. And like, you know, like it's, <laughs> and there's just no cruise. I mean, it's cruising and then stalling. And, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's just I but it makes me laugh that like now that this is like the fourth book that I've written and it, plus another draft of a book that'll be out in a couple of years. I'm like, oh, wow, it just doesn't change. Like, it's never not you in the blank page and all the psychosis that goes along with it. <laughs> Yeah, and that, and that's kind of what it is, you know, being an mm -hmm. author. Do you do you listen to music at all while you're writing? Yeah, I I some like I write mostly at home. At home, there's not so much music, but whenever I get stuck, I like to go to a coffee shop with headphones. And to me, I I think it comes from being a journalist and having constant deadlines and pushing back against distraction. So sometimes I like to sit down and like maybe not with the headphones, but you know, eavesdropping a little bit on someone, and I have to overcome that obstacle of like listening to someone else or like, Oh, what is that person over there doing to get lost in the work and then put on the music. And it's a nice feeling when you realize, Oh, I haven't heard the music, but it's been playing because I'm so into what I'm writing. So I feel like that's one of my little like tricks that helps. Yeah. And, and I, at home. I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I read something on your Twitter too. That was interesting. You said, you know, during, I guess I assume it's what you're writing now because uh, it was a, a few weeks back, like that you were writing something rather than writing around something. Um, yeah. Ex mm -hmm. Can you explain that for the audience? Um, well, I think if you like to, sometimes you start writing without thinking and then you're doing the thinking in the writing. And instead of getting somewhere, you're still figuring it out. And there's always a little bit of that, but the more that, the more of this that I do when I break it down, I'm like the more time that I give myself to think about why I want to show this or what part of this we should see, the more the easier and more productive it is when I sit down to write. Because it's like then I know it's like I've almost like I've built the set in my head. I know like the beats and it's all there. It's like outlining without necessarily writing it down, but just giving yourself that time to think so that you're not experiment like it you know what i mean so that the experimental part of it is in the writing and in the style 
not in the what's going on here, not in the narrative. And right. that it's can't you I went to Sweden a few years ago and there's this Swedish author, Denise Runberg, who's just, you know, fantastic, but she was like I tell my kids, like, they walk into a room and I'm just staring out the window and I'm like, this is mommy staring time. This is what writing looks like. And that stayed with me forever. And I always go back to that because I'm like, oh, yeah, like when it looks like you're doing nothing, you're doing something, you know, you're figuring it out. Yeah. And of course, yeah, I mean, and also like and then the Joe and me is like, oh, shut up, you pretentious girl. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, right. Sometimes you're not, of course. You know? <laughs> but it's like that when you write a chapter or, you know, a draft of anything and feel like, oh, wait, like if you're reading it and thinking, oh, I'd rather see this or like, how come not this? It's like, that's that writing around it, you know? And sometimes you need to do that to write the thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely understand. Uh, does the mindset change at all? Now that it's a TV show, do you find yourself writing more dialogue than you used to? Because you're, you want to please the fans of like, oh, hey, this is about what you might see on the TV show or this this line might end up in the TV show. It's a fun like after I finish something thought of like, oh, I would be fun to see this out loud. But I've always written a lot of dialogue. So it's it, that hasn't changed like the style. And yeah, no, that hasn't changed. I just it's you know, I or like what's changed is that if I describe a scene. And then a day later, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Like, I actually want to see that happen. Like, I don't want that to be something that he went to. I want that to be something he's in. And I think I also just like watch a lot of TV. <laughs> so my brain kind of works that way. <clears throat> and I love dialogue. What, so. do you, what, what are you watching these days? Um, I love The Shy. I'm going to sound like a, like a Showtime, you know, <laughs> sick of vamp. But The Shy to me, like every week, it makes me cry. It's, it's so moving. And just beautifully shot. The shy. Uh, yeah, it's beautifully shot. That's one of the most gorgeous TV shows that that shot. Um, I don't know who their DP is, but it's that's I know fantastic. It's just, yeah, and yeah, and every story. I guess too, like every story works for me, which is rare in that kind of a show. Like, there's no there's no time when we go to someone. I'm like, oh, this again. You know, like there's not that feeling. And I love billions. <laughs> really, billions. Yes. Billions is really relaxing to me because I love the way they speak. Like there's such a specific tone to it and all of the references to nineties music. And I just, yeah, there to me, all the actors are really great. It's also such a different world. Like that's my version. That's my game of Thrones. Cause I'm like, I don't like, I've never worked in finance. I did like, well, for one day I did at Bear Stearns and it was a disaster, but that's another story. <laughs> but yeah, I like, I like stepping into another world like that. And then I've been watching Designated Survivor on Netflix. <laughs> right. De Designated Survivor is your jam, huh? No, if, season one was great, but season two, now I'm watching it because I, you know, because I'm in the compulsive like 2019 state of like, I must finish. But it's amazing. I've never seen anything like just change so much. Like it's just, it's like what the same people are there, but it's like it's a different show. So it's also kind of fascinating. Yeah, you're, you're talking, it's the key for Sutherland one, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's a cra He's a wild man. That guy. Um, <laughs> to the, to <laughs> yeah. the nth level. If you if you get to work on a show with him, good luck. It's off to the races with him. He's he's a blast. Um, is there anybody you want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? That, that that you have somebody in mind that you're writing for? No, I don't. Well, I'm I'm writing something with John Stamos right now, a, like a, a pilot. Stamos and love Stamos. Yes. Yes, he's awesome. I mean, we met, he was so great. And, you know, he's so great. And you as Dr. Nikki. And yep. he's just, he's just so awesome. I mean, like, what's funny about him is that one of those people you're aware of your whole life who seems like so good. And it's like, oh my God, he is so good. You know, it's another, it's like what you were saying about, you know, from Shameless. Like, it's that same thing where he's great. We just, we write well together. And yeah, so we'll see if anything happens with that. But you never know. Stamos is the best. Is he as pimpy in real life as, as every lady on the planet thinks he is? He's really funny and then really smart. And yeah, like he's, yeah, he's just a truly great, like, just all around. But, but also like really attractive, right? Like he's really, like, I, look, I'm not yeah. gay, but I, he, I would probably turn for the night with Stamos. Yeah, I mean, it's like the stepbrothers line. Yeah, every once in a while I'm just looking at him thinking, oh, that's right. That's you and the step, you know, when, in Step Brothers when they're yeah. like John Stamos. <laughs> <laughs> and as a 90s girl, like, hey, man, that's full house all day long right there you know yep mm -hmm. yeah and he was yep. awesome in you i loved his character i actually wanted to see more of him in that show i know i hope so too yes mm -hmm. 
yeah, yes, he, yes, yeah. He he was fantastic in it. Um, so- oh yeah, I mean, and I felt that way about some. Like that was what was funny as we were casting. I mean, especially like with, with like Benji and Peach. I'm like, maybe Joe doesn't have to kill them. And you know, Sarah's like, Caroline, like you know, you wrote this. <laughs> I'm like, ah, but this is so different. Like in a book, like they're not people, and they're not, you know. It's it's just so different. <laughs> yeah, when you started, did you did you think it would be a series or a or a movie, perhaps? Because when I when I first read it, and again, this was uh, man, I think 2015 is when I read it. Um, I thought maybe it was going to be a movie, like a big movie. Yeah, for me, that was like a it was a, a state of mind thing for me. Like at times, I could see it as a movie, and other times, I would be like, oh, but I want everything to be in here, and in TV, it can go on forever. And that's where ultimately, like, I like this because in TV, I feel like you're, especially in this story and the way that they've seized on the voiceover, like you're in it, you're following him through as he's following people. And I feel like that's just great TV. And that's an experience that you want like a lot of. And if it were a movie to me, it would just, it would be different, you know? Yeah, I I, I agree. Yeah. I I think, uh, I think you got really lucky that somebody picked it up as a series because again, it just keeps going. I'm, I'm amped for season two. And then with the Chris D'Elia thing, I, I had read somewhere that you would wrote that for him. Is that true? That I had, I'm sorry, what? With Chris D'Elia. Uh, I I had read that you would wrote that for him or he was the dream person to play that role. Um, is that true? Oh, I think, no, I mean, I didn't write it with him in mind. It's one of the, like, I feel like he was one of many, like, oh, you know, like, it's never one person. It's, and sometimes it's also after the fact that I'm watching something like, oh yeah, like you, that's right. That's who this reminds me of. But I think he's, I, I mean, he's perfect casting. I can't, I, I think it's wonderful that it's him. <laughs> yeah. He's hilarious. Do you listen to his show? I have it. Yeah. I mean, I've always been, you know, aware of him out there and he's great and just to, and his way about him. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. It's a nice feeling yeah. because it was always like, it's a mood thing to me or like whatever. Like my editor will laugh sometimes. Like I love to get your pages because I can tell what you've been doing this week by what you're mentioning. <laughs> and by the way, like characters are skewed. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's obvious. <laughs> yeah. He's one of those guys who's like on fire right now. So the combination of him in season two of you, like it couldn't be any more perfect uh, for this thing to get bigger and bigger. Yes. It's, it's yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've turned into like this, yeah, I'm like it's perfect. Like, you know, like <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy way to feel about something, especially when we live at a time where so much is not perfect. You know? Uh, yeah, <laughs> ab- absolutely. Uh, every day, it <laughs> at seems least some like things something are. New. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> at, <laughs> yeah. Le- at least this is. Hey, you got the casting of Chris D'Elia perfect, so you're good mm-hmm. to go on that. Um, yeah. I want I want to talk about uh, your book, Providence. Oh yes, the, yeah. The paperback is out in two weeks. I'm sitting here looking at them right now. They're so pretty. I'm so excited for it to be, especially like for summer. That's a nice, a light book to bring to the beach. Well, light and weight, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, what's, is, has that been optioned yet? Um, it's, there are talks. I hope so, but it's in the early, you know, like the early unofficial stage, but that would be very nice. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I know, look, I know you're hunkered down on these, these next two, uh, you sequels, obviously, but, uh, uh, anything else for like a, like a series like that later in the future? Um, any, another Providence book? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think about them all the time and like, I can see going back to that in a couple of years. I think it's also the way it works for me is like, I wrote the two, the first two you books together. And then I def, and then I had this other story in my head and I wanted to write something else. And I know like, like, and then it was like, okay, I like to write whatever I'm dying to write. And I'm like, right now, because it was so long between like writing Hidden Bodies and writing this U book, I'm like, ah, like this is good. And I feel like I have the inklings of the Providence. And then in a couple of years, oh, hell yeah. I mean, if if I can get, you know, if someone wants to publish that, I would love to write that. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to circle back to your Entertainment Weekly experience, who knew all of that would come in handy, you know? Um, sorry, one more time. Uh, your Entertainment Weekly experience, you know, to 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 go back to that. Um, who knew all of that would come in handy? Because I'm sure you got to meet everybody in your mother, and then you know, learn about the business, and now you're in it. You're actually, you know, writing and living the life of the people you used to be reporting on. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I remember like the first time there was something about my book deal in the magazine. It blew my mind. It just absolutely blew my mind. Like, it's still, it's just always so cool and they put providence on the must list last year and i remember seeing that like you know it's just it's it's just so incredible do and they, the, because do I, they remember that you work there 
Oh yeah, my old um, Henry Goldblatt, who's the editor in chief, is a good friend, and he had come to the magazine while I was leaving, and it was like one of those lucky kismet things that I met him before I left because I wanted to go to California, and it was like I had, I had been offered a position to stay at the magazine and be a correspondent, <clears throat> but I, at that point I was like I had the California Barbie dream thing in my head, and I just really wanted to go, and Henry was totally understanding. And then last last summer, or last fall, Kristen Baldwin, who was pretty much my boss at EW, one of my bosses, she moderated a panel about you, and that was just so awesome. You know, like it's wow. like it's so fun to reunite with people that I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily get to see otherwise, and have them all revved up about this. And and also, she can remember me, you know, coming in late because I was up late working on my short story. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, how the times have changed, huh? Yes. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Well, look, I, I, I greatly appreciate you being on the show today. Much continued success. Where can everybody find you on social media? Thank you. Um, I'm on Twitter and I'm on Instagram and I have Facebook, but I feel I go in phases. I feel like I'm more on Twitter and Instagram lately than Facebook. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's weird, right? Uh, Twitter yeah. is, a, is a pretty quick response, um, whereas Facebook seems to be, I, I find that like last for me right now. Uh, it's usually mm. Instagram and Twitter where I'm like, all right, cool. And then I'll go to Facebook later. Right. And then there are some days when I feel like allergic to Instagram or Twitter. And I'm like, oh, I can't look at you today. Like for whatever reason, I have no, I'm like, I feel like in 30 years, the books that they write about this when they figure out what, what it was all doing to our brains are going to be so fascinating. Oh, yeah. Look, the AI will have taken over at that point. And, I, and I'm That's sure true. it'll yeah. just assume oh, yeah. your voice and write <laughs> yes. 50 more use for you for the future generations. That's right. Yes. While you're dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yep. They'll, they'll set up a hologram of you behind your laptop, you know, in your kitchen <laughs> and be like, look, that's where she would have probably written it. And then yes. here's her new books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I look, no. I, I appreciate, I know exactly. We're, we're there. We're there. We can't fight it. We, we might as well embrace it. The robots have taken over. My buddy said, you might as well be just nicer when you scream out things at your computer because it's going to remember everything about you and then, and then assume your life after that. I know. It's, oh, it's, yeah. I'm like, can we just die now so we don't have to see it happen? <laughs> I know. We're going to be their pets someday and that's it. Uh, just eat yeah. in a corner, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on today. I look forward to the second season, and uh, you're one of the finest writers out there, so your success is absolutely deserved. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Ross, so much. This is great. All right, take care. <laughs> okay, you too. Bye. Bye. Bye.